Venom, poison, or toxin? What's the difference? Wait, aren't these terms synonyms? Well, if the news or pop culture are to be believed, then you might think so. Or even worse, you might think that rattlesnakes are poisonous, Eddie Brock is venomous, and toxins are mystical particles found in processed food that can only be removed with vegetable juice, colonics, and yoga. It turns out that the differences are actually quite simple, and using these terms correctly will make any biologist or snake enthusiast less likely to cringe themselves to death when they hear you use them. The main difference between venom and poison can be summed up rather flippantly by saying that if you bite a poisonous organism you die, and if a venomous animal bites you, you die. But there is much more to it than that. So, what is a poison? A poison is any substance that negatively interferes with the function of the body on a molecular level, which can be introduced passively. These substances can be produced synthetically, be naturally occurring, or be produced by organisms. Their methods of delivery are passive, such as ingestion, inhalation, or absorption through the skin. Injection is usually also effective, however it's not required for a poison to work, and is not how organisms typically deliver poisons. Examples of different poisons are ricin, produced by the castor bean plant, tetrodotoxin, found in the pufferfish, hydrogen cyanide, found in organisms such as millipedes, but can also be found in apple seeds and be produced synthetically, and the radioactive element polonium, which was famously used to assassinate Alexander Litvinenko. With this definition, it could be stated that literally everything is a poison, as anything can be harmful or even lethal in a high enough dose. To avoid this problem, generally substances are only considered poisons if their negative effects are caused by small doses or are produced by an organism for the purpose of use as a poison. In order to say what venom is, first we need to understand what toxins are. Toxins are harmful substances produced by an organism. Depending on the toxin, they can be delivered passively, for example by ingestion, inhalation, or skin absorption, or actively, such as by injection or application to a wound. So what is venom? Venom is any toxic secretion produced by an animal that is typically delivered via the infliction of a wound to another animal for the purposes of defence, predation, competition, or inflicting harm which benefits the venomous organism in any other way. Using this definition, it is easy to see why an animal such as a cane toad, Rhinella marina, is poisonous rather than venomous. Its toxin is present in secretions which cover its skin and is used to poison would-be predators. It does not use fangs or spikes to inflict this toxin on prey or predators. Also, hopefully you can now see why an animal such as a king cobra, Ophiophagus hanna, is venomous and not at all poisonous. It uses its fangs to inject toxins which subdue both prey and predators. However, if a predator manages to take a bite out of the king cobra without being bitten, the predator should suffer no ill effects. Not all venomous animals use their venom actively. Some species use their venom passively, such as jellyfish and stonefish. Venomous species of jellyfish have stinging cells called nidocytes, which when touched by another animal, release tiny harpoon-like structures which inject venom. Stonefish have these really nasty spikes on their backs. They lie on the sea floor and inject a large amount of venom into would-be predators or unfortunate swimmers as a defence mechanism. Not all venomous animals are reptiles, as the previous examples show. Insects, amphibians, fish, cephalopods, arachnids, crustaceans and worms, among others, can also be venomous. What most people don't know, however, is that mammals can also be venomous. Two of the weirdest, most adorable animals there are, objective scientific fact, the slow loris and the duck-billed platypus, are also venomous, and they aren't the only ones. Male duck-billed platypuses have venomous spurs on their legs that they use to fight with other males. Slow lorises combine a waxy secretion on their arms with the saliva to produce a toxic bite. So now you know the difference, you can insufferably correct anyone who says poisonous snake until the end of time. Great! Unless they're talking about Thamnophis satalis or Raptophis tigranus. <sighs> Bloody exceptions. This has been Critalis scutellatus. Thank you for watching. Uh, sorry about the potato mic. I'm just starting up. Don't really have much cash to buy a fancy mic at the moment. So we're all just going to have to deal with it together. Anyway, I picked this topic um, to be my first video because, quite pedantically, it's something that's infuriated me for quite some time. Um, and the news just seems to be hell-bent on making sure that everyone doesn't know the difference. Um, 
so thanks for lending me your ears. My second video, when I get around to making it, is probably going to be about um, rattlesnakes, just uh, in general, in, in broad strokes. And the third is probably going to be on uh, this channel's namesake, Cretalus Um which has been quite an important snake in my academic career. Uh, I also plan on doing videos about uh, snake dentition, um, spotlighting certain venom species, clades, um, and also looking at some rather interesting uh, case studies on envenomations. Um, so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, um, subscribe and eventually you'll get, probably get another video. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening, goodbye.